Now we have two files that we want to import to our Cassandra instance. One is a data dump of all the authors, and the other is a data dump of all the works. The thing that we're most interested in is in the works, right? We want to get the works information, which is basically the book information, and create a table called books by ID, which maps an ID to a book. Okay, the primary key is going to be the ID, and we want a Cassandra table where we have one row for each book, for each work, right? The thing though is the work information itself does not contain the author name, okay? So you see this, if you take one work, and then uh, this is over here, let's make this JSON and then and format this. You see that the work information, which is this guy, which is basically one row in the work file, it has the title, it has covers. You see the author doesn't have the author name. And what we wanna do is when a page loads for a book, we want to show the author name there, right? This just has the ID. So because of this, what we need to do is get the author dump first, right? The author dump has author ID to author name. So what I'm going to do is first create a temporary table in Cassandra where I'm mapping an author ID to the author name. I'm going to put that out there. And next, when I'm getting each work from the work dump, I'm going to get the author ID for a the author name for the author ID. So let's say I go, go to this line first. I get, okay, this is the work that I need to insert as a new row in the books table. I'm going to get the author name for this author ID from the author table, which I already have. And then I'm going to put that here instead of the author ID. Okay, so the book table is going to have an author name column and not the author ID. It's going to have both actually, but I need to get the author name, which is why I'm going to put the author dump into the table first. All right, so I'm going to get this guy and put it into the table. And again, I'm going to do this using Spring Data, all right? So I'm going to create an author entity class, which contains the ID and the name, and I'm going to use that to put data to the Cassandra table, all right? I'm going to use that to define the Cassandra table, and also I'm going to create new instances of author, and I'm going to use the repository pattern to persist that author instance to the table, all right? So this is what I'm going to do. So the first thing is, to create an author class. I'm going to go create a new class over here. And uh, I'm going to put this inside the author package. I want everything related to author to be in an author package. Similarly, I'm possibly going to create a book package where everything related to book is going to be inside the book package. All right. So I'm going to create a author package dot author class, which is going to be my model class, right? So I'm going to make this public class author, right? So just like with a traditional JPA project, if you're familiar with JPA, what you do is you take this entity class and you give it annotations, okay? These annotations tell the Spring Data dependency what the backing tables are in the database, okay? So in the case of JPA, it's a relational database. In the case of Spring Data Cassandra, it's a Cassandra table. But basically I'm saying, I want this to be mapped to a certain table, right? I use that by, uh, I specify that by using the table annotation, right? So there is a table annotation, which has a value property. And I can specify the name of the table that this thing maps to. I'm gonna call this author by ID, okay? So I want this to be a table called author by ID, which basically has two, mainly two, maybe three or four uh, properties. One is the author ID, the other is the author name. We noticed there were two names there, right? So one is the author name and one is personal name. So we can use that over here, right? So I'm going to create a bunch of member variables. I'm gonna have a private, uh, string ID, which is going to be the author ID. I'm going to have a private string name, which is going to be the author name, and then a private string personal name, which is going to be the actual real name of the author as opposed to a possible pen name or an author name. All right. So we are probably going to be using just the, uh, just the name, maybe not using the personal name. Maybe we might use it later when we're showing the author page. We will see. I'm just going to have those two over there. All right. So now I can define the shape of the table 
this table by providing some annotations over here, right? So now Spring Data Cassandra knows that it has to create an author by ID table for this class, but then what are the columns in that table, right? It doesn't know that, so we're gonna have to specify that. So I do that by specifying a bunch of annotations over here. The first thing I'm gonna do is specify the at ID annotation, and then I'm gonna specify the at primary key column annotation of Spring Data Cassandra, right? The primary key column in Spring Data Cassandra allows me to specify what is the name of the column and then what is the ordinal and what's the partition, okay? Whether it's a partition key or not, all right? So I'm gonna specify uh, name equals, I'm gonna call this author ID. So basically telling, hey, Spring Data Cassandra, create an author ID column in my author by ID table, all right? I'm gonna specify what's called an ordinal I mean, let's say the ordinal is zero, okay? Ordinal basically specifies the order of this column in the primary key. So if you go here, uh, the mouse over, it says order of the column relative to other primary key columns, right? If you have multiple primary key columns, you can specify the ordinal and say this one's first. We don't have it, but I'm still gonna specify the order ordinal as zero. Um, and then I'm gonna have the type be a partition key, right? So this can be a partition key or a clustering column, right? So I'm gonna have this be a partition key and this is partition. So this is primary key type dot partition, right? So this is how I specify the primary key for this table. So there are a bunch of things I'm specifying here. What am I doing? First, I'm saying that this is a primary key by using the primary key column annotation. I'm giving it a name so it knows what's the name it has to create that column as. And then I'm giving this type as a partition key, which means I want this particular property of this class to map to a column in the table, and I want that column to be the partition key. So every unique value of this property, every unique value of this column row in the database is going to result in a new partition, okay? As long as there are two rows that have the same value of this of this property, it's gonna to go to the same partition. And now we know that we're dealing with a database where we, we're dealing with a data source where the ID is unique. So we know that every time we add an ID, it is gonna to map to a unique author and they're not gonna be two rows with that same ID. So you're essentially creating, by using this as a partition key, you're essentially creating one row partitions, every row, is gonna be a partition. So all the data is gonna be essentially scattered in our Cassandra cluster. Each partition can go to any node and each partition is gonna have just one record, all right? So this is my partition key. Next, I can configure what this column is. This is not gonna be a primary key, but I can specify the column by using the at column annotation, right? So I'm gonna give it a name to indicate what that needs to get saved as, all right? So I'm gonna give it a name, which is, uh, let's say, author name. By default, it's gonna take the name of the, the Java property itself, but I can customize it and say, you know, do this. I also need to specify the type, right? So I use the type Cassandra type annotation to specify what the data type of this thing is, right? So there is a type equals, and then here are some of the types that are available. What's the type of the author name? Well, that is text. So I'm going to choose text over here, right? I don't have to specify the size of the text. In a relational table, you have to specify like what's the, you know, var carry, specify how long the var carry is because it's a fixed length and uh, a relational table needs to know how much it needs to allocate to save that text. But you don't need to do that for Cassandra, right? You need to specify it's a text and then the text can be any uh, any size. So this is how I specify that this is a column called author name and of type text. I'm gonna do the same thing for the personal name. I'm gonna put this, the same two annotations. I'm gonna call this personal name and this is also gonna be of type text, okay? And now I'm gonna generate getters and setters for this thing. Source action, getters and setters for all of the properties. And now I have getters and setters for this. So with this, now I have my model class. And now I can create a repository 
for this model class. Again, very similar to if you're familiar with Spring Data JPA, it, it, is, it is very, very similar. So what I'm gonna do is go here back to the author package and I'm gonna create an author repository. Okay, and this is gonna be an interface, right? And this is going to extend Cassandra repository. Cassandra repository. And again, very similar to Spring Data JPA, you give it two types here, right? The first type is gonna be the entity class. The second type is gonna be the ID of, what is the type of the ID, right? What's the entity class here? The entity class is author, okay? That's the first generic type. The second generic type is the type of the ID. What's the type of the ID? It's a string here, right? ID is a string. So I'm gonna specify string here. And uh, with this, now I have a repository class that I can use for fetching data from Cassandra as well as persisting data to Cassandra. So you can imagine how easy this is gonna be now. I can create a new instance of this class, the author class, and then I can say, hey repository, author repository, go persist this thing, right? Author repository dot save, and it is going to save it. It's as simple as that. So it makes it very simple. Uh, now, since we are in a spring context, what I'm gonna do is mark this as a repository. Okay, repository is a stereotype annotation, which tells Spring that this is something that acts as a repository. It's something that can be dependency injected and you can call methods on it. So Spring kind of takes care of the life cycle of this thing so you don't have to initialize this. All right, so now I'm gonna go back to my main method, the main application, which is over here. And uh, let me get this thing over here below. Uh, we want to create a method here which runs when the application starts, okay? So I'm going to create a method, public wide start, and then I can have this run by using an annotation called that post construct, okay? And I can print out a message it says application started. And now when I run this thing, this method is going to execute because I have post construct basically saying after the, everything has been constructed, run this method, okay? So now it should run it. Okay, it's over, over here, right? Application started. And the application has started and this has this method has run. Now what I can do is create a new author and then persist it using the repository, right? I'm gonna dependency inject the repository over here. I'm gonna auto wire it. Author repository, author repository. And then here I'm gonna create a new author. new author and of course I'm going to import author and then let's say author.set id I'm just giving random values here just to test that this works author.set name of name and author.set personal name of personal name okay and now I can basically ask the repository to save this thing right I'm going to say uh, author repository dot save of author. And now if I were to run this, well, I actually have it running. So it's, when I save this, it's actually gonna restart because I have developer tools installed. So notice what happens when I run this thing. Well, the message is gone, but it's actually executed this and we can actually find out if it's persisted it by going to the database. Ideally, what should have happened is it should have created a schema first, right? Because of my uh, application YAML file saying that the schema needs to be created if it doesn't exist, all right? And then once it's created the schema, it is going to run this method in the main, which is this guy here. It's gonna create a new instance of this author model and it is going to persist this, which is over here. It's gonna save this. So it should have, you know, when I go to the database, it should have a table 
called, you know, uh, what's this called? The author by ID, and it should have a row which is corresponding to that instance that we've just created. So let's look that up and find out if it's actually done the job. Okay, so I'm gonna go to my console here, better reads. Here you see it's already done a write. Okay, you can notice that there is one write which has been done. So I'm gonna go over here and uh, go to my SQL console. So it opens my SQL console here, which I can run. And I'm going to use the key space main. Well, I should actually find out if it has created that key space main. Well, it should have created it because we did it ourselves, didn't we? So describe main. There should be a key space main here. Well, it already has it. And now here you see there is a table inside key space main, which is authored by ID, right? Notice this, it's created this stuff. It has ID which is a primary key, author name, which is text, and personal name, which is text. So all this is done because we created an entity which had that shape, and we used Cassandra annotations to tell it what the corresponding table should be, and it basically created this, uh, this table for us, right? So I'm gonna use main, so I'm gonna go to that key space, all right? And then I'm gonna do select star from author by ID and I'm going to get that record that I've inserted, okay? So this is basically the repository pattern in Spring works just as well for Cassandra as well. So now we have a mechanism to save data to Cassandra. In the next video, we are going to do this with the file. We're gonna open the file, parse it one by one, line by line, and we're gonna build one author instance for each line, and we're gonna do this persisting so that all those author information gets saved to this database. So let's check that out next.